Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to do a review of bacteria. We're going to focus today's discussion on gram-positive cocci and how to differentiate between the many different species, as well as what they clinically cause. Let's first start off with gram staining. Gram staining is a method that helps us organize bacteria into two groups, gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative bacteria. We use crystal violet staining to identify these two groups. Basically, there's a peptidoglycan layer on gram-positive bacteria on the outside of it. Crystal violet stains this layer and stains it purple. So gram-positive organisms will peel purple. Gram-negative or organisms have a peptidoglycan layer, but on top of that is covered by a phospholipid membrane. So the crystal violet cannot penetrate through to actually dye the peptidoglycan, so it appears pink. So gram-positive organisms are purple, gram-negative organisms are pink. Various licensing tests or just tests in your postgraduate degree will ask you to differentiate between these two organisms. Next, I provide a picture of what gram-positive and gram-negative organisms look like. Gram-positives are the one that are deep purple sitting there in clusters, and gram-negatives are the long rods that are present. And the purple-pink is how you differentiate the two. So let's talk about gram-positive cocci. When we differentiate bacteria, not only can we differentiate them based on their staining properties, but also on their shapes. So they can be differentiated to what's called cocci, or berry-like, or bacilli, which are rod-like. We will focus today's discussion on gram-positive cocci. So the first test you need to do when you differentiate gram-positive co cocci is called the catalase test. The catalase test breaks down gram-positive cocci into two major groups. So, what is the catalase test? Well, catalase is an enzyme that converts hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, into its separate components, hydrogen and oxygen. There's some bacteria that contain this enzyme, catalase. And when you put hydrogen peroxide in a medium with this bacteria, you'll see oxygen bubbles form, meaning it's catalase positive. Some notable catalase positive organisms are Staph, Burkholderia, Cornobacterium, and Ocardia. Catalase negative organisms are Strep and Enterococcus. So, of the gram positive cocci that are catalase positive, they are further described as gram positive spherical bacteria in grape like clusters. So, keep this in mind. When you get the description of gram positive spherical bacteria, in clusters that are catalase positive, you know right away that this is what is called Staphylococcus. The reason it's important to understand this description is that tests will give you the description and not the bacteria name and ask you to figure out what bacteria it is. So it's really important to differentiate these bacteria based on their features. So remember, gram positive, spherical, in clusters, staph. Now, catalase negative gram-positive cocci are further described as elongated bacteria in pairs or chains. This subset of organisms is called streptococcus or enterococcus. Again, gram-positive, elongated in pairs or chains. Now let's talk about staphylococcus. Staphylococcus can be further differentiated down. We further differentiate by the coagulase test. Coagulase is an enzyme that converts fibrinogen to fibrin, and certain bacteria have this coagulase enzyme. So if you put fibrinogen into a test tube with this bacteria that has coagulase, you'll see a clot form. That's called a coagulase-positive test. Examples include Staphylococcus and Yersinia pestis. Now we use the coagulase test to differentiate between two sets of bacteria. So Coagulase positive, gram positive cocci that are catalase positive is Staph aureus. Now, gram positive cocci that's catalase positive but coagulase negative can be further broken down into two separate groups. And we differentiate between these two separate groups of bacteria by a test called the Novobiosin test. Novobiosin is a type of antibiotic that we generally don't use clinically, but we use it within the lab. 
it helps us to differentiate between two different type of gram-positive cocci that are catalase positive but coagulase negative. Novobiosin sensitive bacteria is called Staph epidermidis. Staph epidermidis is a very common bacteria on the skin flora. It's associated with infection of bioprosthetics such as heart valves. It is commonly associated with contamination of blood cultures. So if you get Staph epidermidis in one blood culture of two, it is likely a contaminant if it's not in both blood cultures. But you can get bacteremia, that means bacteria in the blood, with Staph epidermidis. The organism that is gram-positive cocci, catalase positive, coagulase negative, and novobiosin resistant is called Staph saprophyticus. It is commonly associated with what's called honeymoon's cystitis. It is the second most common cause of urinary tract infections, especially in the young. So this is a brief overview picture of gram-positive cocci that are catalase positive and how to differentiate between them. Know the different tests, know the description of each organism. Now I'll talk about streptococcus slash enterococcus. So this is part of the catalase negative gram-positive cocci. The first test that we will need to understand is called the hemolysis test. Hemolysis helps differentiate between the different types of catalase negative gram positive cocci. It splits the groups up into alpha, gamma, and beta hemolytic strep. So, hemolysis tests test a bacteria's ability to cause rupture of red blood cells. And again, it's split into beta, alpha, and gamma. Beta hemolytic organisms, when blood is placed in a tube and the tube is inoculated with bacteria, the tube actually turns a clear cherry red. The reason why is, is that if you think of putting blood into a solution, the solution should actually be cloudy because there's material in there. When the bacteria lyses it, everything opens up and there's nothing refracting light as much, so it clears up. Also, if this beta hemolytic strep is placed on a blood agar plate. That means agar with blood infused into that nutritional supplement for the bacteria. A clearing develops around beta hemolytic strep. The reason why is that the beta hemolytic organisms are killing off and opening up the red blood cells. Alpha hemolytic strep doesn't cause lysis or breaking apart of red blood cells but causes oxidization of hemoglobin. So when placed on a blood agar plate, the plate agar actually turns a green color. Gamma hemolytic strep means there's no reaction, meaning the organisms have no reaction when placed in a blood agar plate. They don't oxidize, nor do they cause lysis of the red blood cells. Now this is how you differentiate between the different organisms that are gram-positive cocci and catalase negative generally the strep and enterococcus group. So let's talk about beta hemolytic organisms. So the next step we use is called bacitracin. Bacitracin is another antibiotic that we clinically don't use too much. So gram-positive cocci that are beta hemolytic and are sensitive to bacitracin is strep pyogenes. It's associated with pharyngitis, impetigo, erysipelas, and cellulitis. Essentially, this bacteria causes a lot of skin and mucosal infections. Now, for gram-positive cocci that are beta-hemolytic but novobiosin-resistant, that organism is called strep agalactiae. It is otherwise known as group B strep. It can be passed to infants during delivery, causing neonatal meningitis. And all pregnant women are tested for this because if they're positive, they have to receive antibiotics right before delivery so that the child does not develop this infection. Now let's talk about alpha or gamma hemolytic strep. As you can see, there are a lot of organisms in this category. Let's start with the Uptochin test. The gram-positive cocci that's alpha hemolytic and Uptochin sensitive is called strep pneumonia. Strep pneumonia is commonly implicated in sinusitis, otitis media, pharyngitis, pneumonia, sepsis, endocarditis, as well as many other infections. It's a very ubiquitous organism. A potion-resistant organism is called strep virdans. It's part of the mouth flora, 
but can contribute to endocarditis. The next test we will use is called the bile esculin test. Bile esculin is a specialized agar that we put on a plate and inoculate the plate with bacteria. The bile salts are used to inhibit the growth of gram-positive organisms other than any enterococcus or group D streptococcus. The agar also contains components like nutrients, esculin, and ferric citrate. When the organism hydrolyzes the esculin, it forms a compound that reacts with ferric citrate. When this occurs, a dark brown or black color is produced. And this is called a esculin positive test. So, of the organisms that are bile esculin negative, they are just called variant strep, essentially just normal flora that are not really clinically relevant. Bile esculin positive organisms under this category have to be further differentiated using the 6.5% sodium chloride growth. Essentially, they have 6.5% of sodium chloride solution within the agar, and they see if the bacteria grows. If the bacteria doesn't grow, then we know that this organism is called strep bovis, or group D strep. It's commonly associated with meningitis, sepsis, and endocarditis, but also plays a very large role in development of colorectal cancer, as patients who have strep bovis have an increased risk of colorectal cancer. The organisms that do grow in this solution of sodium chloride are termed enterococcus. Enterococcus is further differentiated by on a tellurite agar plate. If an organism grows on a tellurite plate, then it's enterococcus fischialis. This organism is responsible for endocarditis, bacteremia, urinary tract infections, and more recently has developed vancomycin resistance and causes this term to otherwise be known as VRE, or vancomycin-resistant enterococcus. Those that are telluride-negative, meaning they don't grow on this media, is called enterococcus fascium. It's part of the GI flora, and again, it can also cause bacteremia, neonatal meningitis, and it also has developed resistance to many antibiotics, including vancomycin, and can also be termed what's called VRE. So this is the overall picture of gram-positive cocci, how to differentiate them to two separate groups of staph and strep, including enterococcus, and then how to further differentiate them down to the exact species. Commonly, will be tested based on the description. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you have any comments about any future topics or about this video, place a comment down below, and definitely subscribe. This is Dr. K from My Medical School, and I'll see you next time.